there are many questions you are faced with every day. We are all searching for answers that will make a real difference in our lives. It's hard to imagine that these answers might be right in front of us. Get ready to discover answers in the Bible with Baylis Conley. Did you know the Bible said without faith it is impossible to please God? Not just hard, not difficult, but impossible. Faith pleases God and the Bible says the just shall live by faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. And it's surprising to me, I've been pastoring for many, many decades, how many believers have not truly gotten a grasp on what faith really is and how simply it is to be expressed. Faith seems to be a mystery to some people. They just kind of, you know, can't get their head and their heart around it. Well, in this message, we're going to be talking about some of the basics of faith. And I believe whether you've been saved for 35 years or 35 minutes, this is going to be a program that will help you in your walk with God. So let's talk about some of the basics of faith. Our theme is called Reboot. Just sort of going back to some of the basics, uh, because in the spiritual life, there's really no such thing as being static. You don't stay in one place. If you're not moving forward, you are sliding back. And uh, if you're not growing in faith, well, you don't just stay in one place. You end up going in the other direction. And I think it's important for us to, to revisit some of the foundational principles concerning faith and other subjects that we're going to deal with um, in the coming weeks. But uh, my assignment tonight, I've been asked to talk to you about faith. And we're going to go back a little bit to some of the basics. Look with me if you would at Hebrews chapter 11. Heavenly Father, we ask you for insight concerning your word tonight. Illuminate these hearts of ours so we can act upon your word and experience the results that you have already stated. It is your desire for us to experience. Jesus, we love you tonight. May you be glorified. Amen. Right, I want to start with a simple question. What is faith? People have all sorts of definitions, and for some people, it is extremely ambiguous. It's just sort of, well, you know, you just believe, you know, and, and they really can't quite put their finger on what faith is, and yet the Bible tells us what faith is. Here we have a technical, if you would, a biblical definition in Hebrews 11 and 1. It says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So faith right away, we understand, deals with unseen realities. I like the Living Bible here. It says, what is faith? It asks the question, what is faith? It is the confident assurance that something we want is going to happen. It is the certainty that what we hope for is waiting for us, even though we cannot see it up ahead. Many translations of the scripture use words like a confident assurance or a conviction. It's not just wishful thinking. It is a substance. It is evidence. It is a confident assurance in a person. It's not just a principle, though there's certainly principles involved, but it's faith in a person. If you take Jesus Christ away, it doesn't work. If you take the Heavenly Father away, it doesn't work. If you're just into work in principles, you don't need God at all. But this is faith in a person, a confident assurance, an expectation, a conviction that a person, God our Heavenly Father, is going to bring certain things to pass in our life. And you know, faith can be general, but it can also be quite specific. Now, Janet, we were just up here a moment ago. Tom tried to embarrass us. Sorry, Tom, didn't work. <laughs> and you know what goes around eventually comes around, so. 
Jan and I, we've been married 35 years. We dated for eight months before we got married. And uh, she knows me pretty well. She has a general faith in me because she knows my character and she knows my nature. So she knows I will not abandon her. She knows that I will do everything within my power to provide for her. And she will know, she knows that I would lay down my life in order to protect her. Those are just like not even issues. She doesn't even think about those things. She never worries about those things. She has a general faith in me because she knows my character and my nature. And it affects the way we interact. It affects the way that she lives. It affects the way that she thinks. But she also has a specific faith in me at times. And that's when I give my word or make a promise to her. You know, she, let's just say she leaves. She's going to go out with her girlfriends, and I'm, I'm getting ready to go out and do something. And she's been gone about an hour. My mobile phone rings. I'm just getting ready to walk out the door. She says, honey, I left my house key in the kitchen. I forgot my house key. I'm going to be home in about, you know, 45 minutes. Are you going to be there to let me in? I say, sorry, sweetheart, I'm not. I've got an appointment and I won't be here, but I'll tell you what I will do. I will put the house key in the mailbox. I'm gonna tell you what she doesn't do. She doesn't say, well, I'll believe that when I see it. <laughs> she doesn't say, well, well, how do I know? How do I know? What, what, what if you don't do it? She doesn't say, well, I'm not gonna believe it until you drive to where I am and put the key in my hand, and when I see the key in my hand, then I'll believe it. But there's no way, Bayless, that I'm going to drive 45 minutes all the way back to the house and look in that mailbox just because you said so. No, you know what she'll do? When I tell her I'm going to drop the key in the mailbox, she says, okay. And that's it. End of conversation. And then she acts upon what I said. That's a very specific faith and a promise. And Faith in God is both general and it's specific. Because of his unchanging character and nature, he's always faithful, he's always good, he's always merciful. Because of that, I have a quiet assurance that he will provide for me, that he'll protect me, that he will guide me, that he'll care for me. I have a general faith, so I never worry about those things. I have an underlying confidence that my Heavenly Father loves me. I know His nature. I understand His character. I'm learning more all the time, but, but I'm not going to worry about my needs being met or Him caring for me. I'm not going to think that He's going to abandon me. He loves me. That's His nature. But there's also specific faith. And that is both significant and critical to our walk with God. Specific faith both comes from and is based upon his word. Romans 10, 17 says this, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. How many of you know that verse of scripture? So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now, faith comes by hearing, it goes by not hearing. Or it goes by hearing something in place of the word of God. If there is a deficiency in faith, almost always it is because there is a deficiency of the word. If there's a deficiency of faith, almost always it's because there's been a deficiency of feeding upon the word. You know, Tuesday nights at my house, they're really fun. We call it family night. And I'd say 90% of the time, I do all the cooking. And I look forward to it. I'll spend most of the day doing it. Everybody comes over, and it's mayhem in the house. Um, you know, there's sports on TV, or we on TV, or just, there's just, you know, you get little grandsons, and it's just nuts. It's wonderful, but it's nuts. And um, so last night, we had family night. And I decided to make meatballs. A friend of mine gave me some beautiful organic beef from Montana, and I took it and I made these, oh. 
with onions and all these beautiful spices and freshly grated Parmesan cheese, these amazing meatballs. And I started this vegetable soup early in the morning and it simmered all day with peppers and carrots and celery and onions and mushrooms. And oh, it was so good. And I made, I got it for my, that's for Christmas. I got a brand new deep fryer. That was my Christmas gift. And I made a mountain of French fries. So we've got all these beautiful meatballs, just um, vegetable soup, and you know, a stack of French fries this tall that vaporized in about 19 seconds. <laughs> and you know, we ate that, and we got physical strength from it. I even had a couple of meatballs for lunch today, leftover meatballs. Man, they were good. Now, you know what? Two weeks from now, I can describe to you the same meal. I can tell you about the meatballs. I can tell you how long I put them in the oven for. I can tell you everything about making them. I can tell you how it tasted. But I'm no longer going to derive physical strength from that meal two weeks on. And you know, when I feed upon God's word, faith comes by hearing. It gives me a spiritual strength called faith. But I ha faith, I love the way it puts it. Faith comes by hearing. It's this continuous tense. Faith comes by hearing, not by having heard. That's why it's so important that we daily feed upon the word. Even when the Israelites gathered up the manna, and you know, God's words, that is the bread come down from heaven. But when the, the Israelites gathered this, this, this manna, this bread from heaven every day, there was just enough for the day. If they tried to save it up and store it up, it spoiled and it bred worms. God was teaching them a lesson that when it comes to the living word, we have to feed daily in order for our faith to be growing and to be active. And so I'll say it again. If there's a deficiency in faith, it almost always, almost always goes back to a deficiency in the word. If you will just spend time feeding on the word, reading it, thinking about it, considering it, praying about it, speaking it aloud to yourself, faith will come unconsciously. So we've talked about what faith is, where it comes from. Next question, how is it expressed? And mark your place here in Hebrews. We'll come right back. In the very next book in your Bible is the book of James, just a few pages over. Look in James chapter 2, if you would. James chapter 2 and verse 18. It says, but someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without your works, and I will show you my faith by my works. You believe that there is one God. You do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. Demons have faith. They believe, but they don't believe and repent. They don't believe and worship. They don't believe and obey. They don't respond with appropriate action. And you can have faith, but if you don't respond with appropriate action, as far as faith goes, you're not in a better spot than the demons are. Because the demons believe, but they don't respond in the right way. They don't believe and repent. They don't believe and obey. See, look at verse 20. It says, do you want to know, O foolish man, that faith without works is dead? And that word works means actions. The International Standard Version says, faith without actions is worthless. Another translation says, faith which does nothing is useless. It's useless. Another translation says, faith without actions that correspond. It's dead. And then look at verse 26, if you would. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works or without actions that correspond is dead also. So faith, in order to have any effect, must be expressed or released through action. Faith is an act. You know, I was down in Mexico in the Sea of Cortez with some friends a few years ago. We're on this old converted trawler for the better part of a week. It would pull all these little boats behind it called pongas, and then we'd have a little skipper 
on the ponga. It's maybe about, I don't know, 16 feet long, something like that. And we'd go off for the day, and it's like a little 40 horse on this ponga, and we'd go off, and we would free dive and spearfish all day long. And so we get to this one spot, and the panguero looks at me, and he goes, Bahia. Now, that's what they call me down in Mexico. That's my nickname for bay, Bahia. That's what it means. Bahia, aquí hay pulpo. There's octopus here. I said, ¿Quieres pulpo? He said, sí. I said, okay. So we get down, and, and a couple guys are over this way, and I'm going along these rocks. I'm swimming down, and out from these rocks crawls a big octopus. And so I just I swam over to it. I didn't fire my spear gun, but I just put the spear through it, and it was a large octopus. And then I brought it up, and like lightning, that thing went, and jumped on me, and like got on my back, pinned my spear gun to me, and he's splayed across my back, and for about five minutes, I couldn't, I tried to move and tried to get a tentacle off, and I couldn't. So I'm there, and I call my friend Dave. I go, hey, Dave. He said, what? I said, come here. He swims over. He says, what do you want, man? He said, uh, help. He said, what do, you, what do you want? What do you mean? So I turn around, and there's this octopus from tentacle to tentacle, about that long, just splayed across my back, big, thick tentacles. I said, can you get this thing off of me? He starts laughing, and for the next five minutes, he's prying this big octopus off my back. And, of course, I gave it to the guy in the ponga, and he was quite happy. But, you know, somebody that would have seen me with that octopus might have been going, oh, Bayless, awesome, hang on, hang on. No, 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 no. I'm not trying to hang on. I'm trying to turn it loose. And when it comes to faith, if it's going to be effective, you have to turn it loose. You do that through action. Faith without actions, it's worthless. It's useless. It's dead. And so look back in Hebrews 11, if you would. And what we have from here, as the chapter rolls on, is a list of men and women that expressed or released their faith. They did it in different ways, but it's recorded as an example to us. And I just want to look at a few of these people that are mentioned just by way of example. First of all, let's look in verse 4. Let's look at Abel. By faith, everyone say by faith. By faith, faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and through it he being dead, still speaks. Now, if we called Abel down from heaven and said, Abel, will you please come up on the platform, explain to us what faith is. Abel said, well, that's easy. It's giving your first and your best to God. That's how Abel expressed his faith. He valued God. He valued God's kingdom. God was first in his life, so he gave God his first and gave God his best. It was an expression of his faith. And if you read the story back in Genesis chapter 4, you know, his brother Cain was a tiller of the ground. You know, Abel was a, 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 a keeper of sheep. And in the process of time, they both brought an offering to the Lord. Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground, which was completely acceptable if you read through the Old Testament scriptures. But it was just sort of a nondescript, didn't cost me anything type of an offering. But specifically, it says, when Abel brought his offering, he bought, brought the very first of his flock And he brought God the very, very best. And the scripture tells us that he did that by faith. I remember years ago, in fact, a lot of years ago, a lady in church came up to me. It was maybe an hour before service started. I was in the auditorium praying. She came in, and uh, she had a little, like, a hand-knitted bag with her almost looked like sort of a hat, but it was a little bag. And she said, Pastor, will you please make sure this gets in the church offering for me? I said, well, sure, what is it? She hands me this bag, and it's heavy. She looked at me, says, that's my loaves and my fishes. I'm trusting God for a miracle. I knew right away what she was saying. She'd been reading one of the stories in the Bible where Jesus blessed a few loaves and a few fish, And God multiplied them and fed a multitude. 
And apparently God had quickened that to her and spoken to her through that scripture because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. And I don't know what kind of a miracle she needed, but I opened that sack up after she left and there was maybe 25, maybe $30 worth of coins in there. That's all it was. But it was big to her. I realized I was holding something extremely sacred. It represented that woman's faith. So I prayed over it and treated it as a holy thing, which it was. You see, faith can be expressed through our giving. It would be 38 years ago, I was attending a church, and uh, the pastor announced that we needed to resurface the parking lot. said it was going to cost $60,000. Now, at that time, $60,000 was absolutely astronomical to me. I mean, it was almost more money than I could conceive of. But I thought, you know what? I love my church. I love God's house. I'm in. So he said, just pray about, you know, what God wants you to do. And I prayed about it. And I I determined in my heart I was going to give $100. Now, that was huge for me. And at the time, all I had was $10. That was it. Now, I didn't tell anybody what I was going to do, but I made a vow before God in my heart. I said, God, I'm going to give $100 to this project to get the the parking lot resurfaced. And as I was praying about it, a verse of scripture just sort of drifted up in my heart. Luke 6, 38, give and it shall be given. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. Will men give into your bosom for with the same measure that you use, it'll be measured back to you again. And I knew the Holy Spirit was talking to me through the word. I understood what I was supposed to do. It was God speaking to me at that moment. So I took my $10, and I know you're not supposed to put cash in the mail, but I did. Actually, that day, put the $10 bill in an envelope, and I filled it out, and I sent it off to a missions organization that was doing salvation healing crusades throughout Africa. Put it in the mail that day. Not another human being on planet Earth knew what I'd vowed in my heart. No one knew what I'd done. Nobody knew about the $10 in the envelope. And the next day, I got a letter in the mail. There was no return address on it. Just addressed to me, didn't say who it was from. I opened it up and there was 10 $10 bills in the envelope. How do you explain that? Well, I think there's a God in heaven that knows our name. And when he quickens his word to your heart, friend, he honors it. And I went right down to the church and put it in for the, you know, resurfacing of the parking lot. So, Abel teaches us that giving God your first and your best can be an expression of faith. And then we move on to another person that's mentioned, Enoch, verses 5 and 6. By faith, Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death. And he was not found because God had taken him. For before he was taken, he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So by faith, and you know, there's very little written about Enoch in the Bible. I want to quote to you. It's Genesis 5 and 24. It says, and Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. Now the previous verse tells us that he did that for over 300 years. Enoch walked with God. And just the phrase walk, it it means a lifestyle. It means fellowship. But listen, Enoch did what he did by faith. If we called Enoch down and said, Enoch, buddy, what's this faith thing all about? He says, it's easy. It's walking with God. Well, what, what, what do you mean? Did you feel God all the time? Well, of course not. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. Enoch did what he did by faith. When he didn't feel God, he lifted his hands and he worshiped God. When he had no sense of God whatsoever, he offered sacrifices to God. He prayed to a God that he could not see, but he knew was listening. Some of you, you feel like, oh man, I I, I just don't feel God. He's nowhere around. No, you walk with him in those seasons by faith. I love it when his presence comes and there's this confirmation. It's like, wow. But you know what? God is not about goosebumps. 
We walk with him by faith. Some of you, you'll do the most growing during those seasons when you act by faith and you don't feel God at all. Enoch did what he did by faith. Let's move on. One of our favorite characters, Noah. Verse 7, by faith, Noah, being divinely warned of things not yet seen, moved with godly fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his household, by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness, which is according to faith. All right, Noah, tell us, how did you release your faith? He said, it's easy. Faith is making preparations. God told Noah it was going to rain. So he got busy and out in some cornfield or somewhere started building an ark for the next 100 years. By faith, Noah prepared. When you believe God's word that he said something is going to happen, your action is to prepare. It's how you release your faith. Thank you for watching Answers with Bayless Conley. Bayless will continue with part two of his message next week. By faith, Noah prepared. It hadn't rained. He had no evidence that God's promise would come true. And yet he acted and he built the ark. That is one facet of faith. It is one way that faith is expressed. When God gives us a promise or he makes a declaration, we act upon it, even if we have no evidence to confirm that it will come true. Because friend, God's word is true. Now, I hope you can join us next time as we look at some other stories in the Bible that are there for you and there for me, so we can learn how to express our faith in very, very practical ways. And remember, without faith, it's not just hard, it's not just difficult, it is impossible to please God. So next time we're gonna be looking at some of the, the, the basics of faith, some of the things that everyone needs to know if they're gonna walk a life that is pleasing to God. Now God has given us the measure of faith, but it's up to us to increase it. And one of the ways we do that is by taking in God's word. So let's do that next time together. We'll see you then. If we're not careful, unforgiveness and strife can cling to our hearts like dirt. It may be a terrible thing that happened to you, but for your own good, <sighs> breathe out forgiveness. Get yourself under the place of God's blessing, forgiveness, and goodness. You can't breathe in God's goodness and His blessing and His forgiveness. <sighs> If you don't breathe out, forgiveness is just the way we're made. In his CD DVD series, Healthy Relationships 101, Bayless Conley shows you how to let go of the tension that keeps you from living a joyful, unburdened life. Learn to resolve conflicts the right way. Order this powerful series today. Just use the information on the screen now. Healthy Relationships 101. For more information and inspiration, visit AnswersBC.org.